Hi, hello and welcome guys. Today we'll be discussing few questions from uh, surveying two, well, it was five surveying uh, from 2017-18 past paper. I have few selected questions which I'm going to discuss. Okay, uh, so let me quickly share the paper. All right, so this is the paper. So uh, sorry about the quality, I couldn't find a better one. Uh, so the first question is, what is the mass hole diagram? Briefly explain the importance of the mass hole diagram in earthwork involved during road or railway construction, right? So this is the uh, first question, right? So we know obviously it is a mass hole diagram is a representation of uh, aggregate of uh, cumulative volume, the total volume of earthwork against the chain age, right? So again if we take the chain edge along the chain edge uh, we'll be drawing the total aggregate volume and uh, we'll be drawing the profile and from that profile we can find out certain things so um, the most economical formation can be found out where the earthwork would be less and we can find out what would be the volume that we have to borrow or what would be the volume we have to waste that sort of things can be found out and uh, we can find a suitable balancing line such that uh, when the uh, graph balances within itself there will be no any need to borrow or waste any material so that our uh, project will be somewhat like self-sufficient when it comes to earthwork we can use what we are cutting and we can fill that and uh, no need to do, do any borrowing or wastage right so we can de determine what are the overhauls, free holes. Free holes will be obviously provided to us. So based on that, we can decide the overhauls, right? And finally, we can find out to which direction uh, the hall has to be moved, right? Uh, from the cutting location or to the filling location, we can find out the directions. So these things are the concepts. Uh, when it comes to the first question a part right so it's a theory question it's in our theory book also right so the second part b part it states that uh, the table below gives the earthwork for a proposed ruler road project uh, carried by a western provincial council the road span is 1200 meter and it is to be balanced along the stipulated stretch so it, it should be balanced within that 1200 meter stretch Right. So the existing ground levels uh, along the center line of the road proposed to be developed and the volumes of excavation and fill involved in making a formation that is rising 1.2 percentage from a level of 20 meter at a chain age of 1200 meter. So at 1200 meter chain age at, at the start point, the reduced level is 20. That is what they have said and it is raising by 1.2 percentage until the end, right? So that is the first thing, right? So the first question is draw the longitudinal section on the existing ground and indicate the formation, right? So I think obviously you can draw the uh, LS, longitudinal section. So in LS, so you we absolutely know that we have done this. We'll mark the reduce level here and we'll be marking the chain edge here, right? And we have to, let's say here is 1,200, 1,300, right? so 1,400. So in that case, we have to mark the reduce levels and we have to join with straight lines, right? So other thing they have said is at 1,200 meter, the reduce level is 20. Right? and it is rising at 1.2 percentage, right? So at 2,400 meters, so that is at the end, we have to find the reduced level, isn't it? So without that, we can't find the formation. So that is equal to 20 plus 1.2 times over 100, since it is percentage into 1,200. So this is our rise. So rise plus our existing ground level will give the new formation level. So that is 34.4 meter. They have asked us to draw this also in the same graph with a 
different same ls with a different ink right so in that case we have to mark that 20 right and at 2400 meter the next value that is 34.4 so this would be the new formation right so from this we can roughly get an idea that this will be a cut right this will be a cut and this small area here this will be this small area will be a fill so we can understand what would be the cut and the fill right so these cut and fill values are already given to us right so they have made the question easier they have given the cut and fill right so if we take the cut and fill right i'll use two or three values right so first we have to prepare a table right so chain age in meters so it starts 1200 leave a space and then 1300 again leave a space 1400 in such manner right so our volumes right our individual volumes our cut right and fill so always cut will be positive and fill will be negative right so when you are writing this cut and fill you have to write in between these two right so if you just make a, a draw some rows right so the cut is happening between 1200 and 1300 meter so in that case it should be written within those space right so the cut is they have given to us as 2000 350 right and in the next part there is again there is a cut of 1972 right and we'll try to complete the chart within this page okay so again we have to leave a space 1500 right so in that case within 1400 and 1500 we have a cut again a cut of 698 right and within 1006 500 and 1600 we have a fill fill of uh, minus 324 right so similarly you have to complete the table right after completing the table right you have to see whether there is a swelling factor or bulking factor something like that they have given if they have given we have to correct the volume we obviously know that when we are cutting a soil right so the volumes will be uh, changing, right? It might get bulked or it might shrink also, right? So correct that volume for cut and fill, right? So keep in mind when you are doing cut and fill, right? Uh, error calculation, you have to only do for cut. Don't do for both, right? If you have to correct either one parameter. So that is uh, typically done to cut, right? So here the uh, bulking factor is given to us as the bulking factor is 1.2, right? It's 1.2. So we have to multiply 2,350 by 1.2. So it gives 2,820, right? Similarly, 1,972 times 1.2, so 2,366. Similarly, here it is 838 for the fill minus 324 don't multiply the field also right uh, finally you have to find the aggregate total volume right so here they have not mentioned about any initial aggregate that we have so our aggregate volume we'll start from zero so aggregate volume at chain is 1200 meter it is zero so at 1300 meter we have 2820 right at 1900 at uh, 1400 meter you have to add uh, 2366 to 2820 so in this case here it is 5186 here similarly it is 6024 here if we subtract it is 5700 similarly you have to complete this entire chart right uh, i think you can complete the chart now right 
So the after completing the chart, they have asked us to draw the mass hole diagram, right? So while drawing the mass hole diagram, right? So actually the mass hole diagram has to be drawn in a graph sheet. So, so in my case, uh, I couldn't find a proper idea to draw in a graph sheet, right? Uh, Right. So here, first of all, you have to draw your LS, so your reduce level and your chain edge. Right. So here you will be having some sort of LS, right, and your formation line. Right. So this is your blue ink, here's your formation line. Here. This is your existing ground level, right? So remember, while you're drawing, mention the scale for both horizontal and vertical. Keep in mind, there should be a ratio between horizontal and vertical. Typically, we use five, right? So keep all those things in mind, right? So right below the... Um, LS, your longitude in section, you have to draw your mass hole diagram, right? So here it is, I aggregate volume, right? So this would be in meter cubes. So here you have to mark your chain edges, 1200, 1300, 1400, and up to then finally 2400, right? So after marking this chain edge, you know what are the aggregate volumes at each point, your zero, 2000, these values. So using these values and respective chain age, we can draw the entire mass hole diagram. So I'll just roughly draw a figure. So you'll get something like this, right? So it is a smooth curve, right? So there are a few properties we have to keep in mind, right? The first thing is, this particular point where the graph cuts the balancing line, right? Not the x-axis, right? So in this question, they have asked us to take the x-axis as balancing line. So the x-axis is the balancing line, right? And our free hole is 400 meters. So these are given to us. Free hall is always defined by the company, right? So keep in mind, when you are drawing mass hole diagram, mass hole diagram, here also you have to mention the scale for both horizontal and vertical, right? Both the horizontal scale in this case and in this case would be same because you are drawing it both on top of one another, right? One would be above and another one would be below. So obviously the horizontal scale would be same, right? So this point, this particular point is very important. That is where the graph, your mass hole diagram cuts the balancing line, right? So what is balancing line? Balancing line means the line where your mass hole, your hauling work has balanced. That means wherever you are, you are cutting, right? So let's take the same point here above, right? So in some sense, right, this cut volume has somewhat filled this fill, right? That means the cut and fill has been balanced, right? So here the total haulage will be, I mean, the total aggregate volume would be again zero, right? I think you would have got the point, right? So when this graph again extends, this portion, if it extends again, if it cuts the balancing line somewhere here, that means here within this area, right? So within this area, the earthwork has balanced. That is the cut and fill has been balanced, right? That is the balancing point thing here, right? Uh, the next thing is, uh, you have to keep in mind is uh, your holes, right? So what is free hall? Free hall is a certain distance where you can transport your haul material without any cost. So this is defined by the companies, right? So if you take 400, right, this is the actual length, right? So you have to change this 400 to your scale. Then taking a ruler, right? So you have to take the ruler, right? 
and slightly you have to start to measure right these lengths you have to adjust your ruler so let's take according to your uh, scale if it is 4 cm right in scale if it's 4 uh, cm you have to find the line which is exactly 4 cm and mark that line right so if the distance is equal to 400 or less than 400 so you will get two portions right i'll mark these portions as 1 and 2 So in portion one, the distance is less than four hundred, right? In portion two, if you observe correctly, the distance is greater than four hundred, right? Not entirely in portion two. In portion two, the distance is greater than four hundred only in two areas, right? If you have to observe that properly, I'll highlight those. One is this area, right? Other one is this area. These red color highlighted areas where, right? in portion 2 this red color highlighted areas right so we, what about the other area in portion 2 right so in this area if you see so what is the whole distance that is exactly 400 right so in that case the, this green highlighted area comes to free hole this green highlighted area and this one this is your total free hole right so the green highlighted area gives you the free hole right the red highlighted area right gives you the overhaul right overhaul in the sense where you are going to transport the material greater than 400 meter that is your greater than your free hole distance right so how we are going to find this free hole and overhaul if in the question if they ask you to find the free hole and overhaul you have to find the area of the shaded portion right so this is given by the area of of that green portion right so to find this area you can count the number of squares and you can uh, give it the most easiest way without any calculation or you can somewhat if you want to do any calculation and all you can use simpson rule step trapezoidal rules right so here the area of the red portion right that is the overhaul right if they ask overhaul and free hole you have to do it in such way right if they ask overhaul volume right so free hole volume right free hole volume and overhaul volume so this is somewhat different ball game now right the free hole volume means right so here this value can be obtained from the curves let's say this is a this topmost point let's say that is b right so what is your free hole volume what would be your free hole volume right this b would be your free hole volume right the free hole volume would be just the volume they asking the volume so that is free hole volume is b right so to be precise in portion 1 you will get a free hole volume of b minus a right this is from portion 1 plus in portion 2 you will get another free hole volume of a right isn't it this is from portion 2 so that that there is a small portion of free hole volume within that portion 2 also so the total would be b right so what is the overhaul volume if you see the overhaul volume would be right i'll write overhaul volume in other side so here the overhaul volume this would be directly a so this is just the volume so you will get this in meter squared the unit would be here in meter squared right when they ask the free hole over overhaul without the term volume the unit here in this case the units would be meter cube times meter right so both are different concepts right 
one is just referring the volume another one is just refer just other one is the exact parameter of how much of meter cube you are transporting through what length right so that is the free haul and overhaul other thing is free haul volume and overhaul volume right so in this question they have asked us to find overhaul they have asked us to find free haul and the total haul right if you know the free haul and overhaul if you add both those two you will get the total haul total haul means the entire area right so when it comes so not only this portion one and two you have to do the same thing in this portion also you have to draw find the line of the free haul distance let's say if it is 400 meter in the scale you have to find your green portion and your red portion so what is green portion green portion is our free haul area red portion is our overhaul area so this is our overhaul right uh, and if you see you will get a free haul of this much right so here uh, what has happened is your final portion right your graph ends here in the negative port, right in the negative section of the mass hole diagram your graph ends here so that means you are lacking this amount of soil right or earthwork right you are lacking this amount you need this certain amount from uh, uh, outside place so you have to borrow this right you have to borrow this certain amount to balance your earthwork right in case right for example in case if this graph ends at a positive place right uh, something like this right in in case right if your mass hole diagram is ending uh, like this right so this amount of volume this last portion this amount of volume where you are ending right let's say the value is 1000 meter cubes so this 1000 meter cube is a waste for you right so until this point right you have balanced so right so let's again assume that x axis is your same uh, balancing line so up till here you have balanced first balancing point is this this is your second balancing point so other than that this portion is your waste you are going to waste this right sometimes in the questions they might state that you have to keep the waste at the end right so in that case this would be the diagram so if they ask you to keep the waste or whatever the thing at the initial stage right at the start of the project while ending right when the project ends there should be no any wastage or borrowing that means your ending point should be the balance point such manner you have to select your balancing line so if the balancing line is this one the red one if this is the balancing line at your end there is no any wastage or borrowing but at initial stage we have to borrow this amount right we are lacking this amount so we have to borrow this right there is no any condition for balance line to be a same single line you can break this you can have a balance line one balance line here and another balance line for the next portion right you can have different balance lines right so according to the required situation do the question right so i think um, actually mass hole diagram would be a very easy part right be careful right the noted points should be your scale right use calculate proper calculation while uh, finding the areas especially when it comes to the halls right um your halls your free hall and all overhauls right uh, don't factorize the fill because already you have factorizing the uh, cut right you have once factorized your cut right so that volume has bulked up or either it can bulk up or either it can shrink so whatever the thing you have to do you have done and finished there so don't do it again for fill you are going to use that soil and fill it right so don't do that work there right so only for cut no factor for fill right here no factor right so those are the main points uh, when it comes to the mass hole diagram right 
uh, be careful while selecting the balance line, the one more thing, right? So balancing line, they will state, mostly they will state if they have not stated or if they have said any conditions like initial waste or final waste or initial borrow or final borrow. So according to the condition, select the proper balance line. At most of the case, if the balance line is x-axis, then it is easier for us, right? So note that balancing point is not the point where the mass hole diagram cuts x-axis, right? Uh, some students make this uh, mistake. So balancing line is where the graph cuts, uh, sorry, balancing point is where the graph cuts the balancing line, right? So those are the things when it comes to mass hole diagram, right? So the next thing, uh, next question is from a different uh, section. Uh, I guess uh, it is from aerial photography, right? So the A part, right? They have said they have set up a photo theoda light, right? So they have set up a photo theoda light, uh, was set up at station A, taking a photograph of points P and Q, which are to be observed, right? So they are observing points P and Q from station A. Uh, which, uh, right, on the photograph taken at station A, right, the point P was found to be 30.5 mm to the left and uh, of her vertical hair and uh, 12 mm above the horizontal air, right? So we'll quickly draw that, right? Right. First of all, they are saying at station A, right? Point P, right? If we see the crosshair figure, right? There is a vertical hair and a horizontal hair, right? From vertical hair, they are saying it is to the left, right? It is to the left of 30.5 mm, right? In the horizontal here it is 12 mm above so this is the location that is observed on the photograph so this is not the actual position this is p dash we don't know where the point is actually this is a relative position right so the next thing is q right q the point q is uh, Right, point Q, right, uh, we'll see. Okay, while point Q was found to be 38.5 mm to the right and 19.00 uh, 19 mm below the horizontal, right? So one is to the right and another one is below, right? We'll quickly draw that one also. So in point Q, One is to the right. So in the vertical axis, it is to the right of 38.5 mm. And another one is below 19 mm. So while drawing this figure, draw a bit large one so it would be easy to understand what is happening, right? So this is the first uh, photographs they have given, right? Details. So the other details that are given to us are the horizontal angle measured from station A between two points P and Q was 25 degrees and 52 minutes and 30 seconds. And the horizontal distance to point P from A is found to be 89 meters, right? We'll see. So the first data, the additional data is given to us as the angle between, let's say if this is point A, station A, this is the actual point P double dash, this is the actual point Q double dash, right? So these are actual points. So this horizontal angle, right? This angle is given to us as 25 degree, 52 minutes, 30 seconds, and the distance AP dash, AP double dash, this is given to us as 89 meters. Right. 
so we'll see right so you have to observe this question in a three dimensional view right so you have to observe this in a plan view and you have to observe this in a elevation view right so when it comes to plan view right so obviously we know what is plan view plan view means we are traveling uh, let's assume that you are traveling on an helicopter or an airplane so you will just only see the variations happening horizontally right you can only observe those variation you can't see the variations what is happening vertically right so only horizontal variations right so you have to keep that in mind when it comes to plan view right so here we are marking point a right so this is our axis right so we'll have a horizon line right so what is horizon line so when it's a far infinite uh, when the arrays rays come from infinite and they converge at the focal point right so this would be our focal length f right of the lens right so here we'll observe a relative position of p dash and another relative position q dash right those are the images that are that we are seeing in the photograph so this would be one line right p dash this would be another line q dash so now we have to figure out this distance let's say the actual position is somewhere there so as we said the variation is happening only in the horizontal direction you can't observe what is happening in the vertical direction right so this distance would be 30.5 mm and this distance would be 38.5 mm right imagine this that as you are doing this survey right forget about uh, the term photo theodolite right simply think this as you are doing a normal theodolite survey right then you can easily guess the diagram right and let's assume this angle to be alpha and this angle to be beta right so if you observe this correctly you can see that tan right alpha plus beta you can figure out this value tan alpha plus beta right or without tan you can figure out actually you can figure out alpha plus beta first what is alpha plus beta that is the angle between p and q so that is 25 degree 52 minute and 30 seconds right so and using your a level knowledge you can expand tan alpha plus beta so that gives tan alpha plus tan beta over 1 minus tan alpha tan beta right so our question is to find the focal length f so what is tan alpha plus beta using your calculator you can find tan alpha plus beta so that is nearly 0.485 that is equal to what is tan alpha from the triangle you can find tan alpha is 30.5 by f what is tan beta that is 38.5 by f over 1 minus 30.5 by f into 38.5 by f so simply you have to solve this you will get a quadratic equation based on f right so by solving using a calculator you have to give a positive answer for focal length that is approximately 150 mm right since we are using millimeters so the answer of focal length is also in millimeters so that is the first part the second part they have asked us to find the horizontal distance to point q from station a when the height difference between p and q is 15.65 they have said the height difference between p and q 
So you don't know what is the level of A. But they have said the height difference between P and Q is 15.56, right? 15.65, sorry, right? So we'll see. So now if you want to observe the height difference, you have to move to elevation view, right? You have to come to your sections, right? Like some sort of elevation. So again, you will be having point A, right? Your station, right? Now you can see only the variation in the vertical axis. So if you see one is above axis, that is one is 12 millimeters above, and another one is 19 millimeters below, right? So one person, one if P is above, Q would be below, right? If both the sections are above, then both the triangles would be in the same side. If both are below, both would be in the below side, right? Now, now let's say this is our uh, so somewhere in this horizon, right? In this horizon line, right? You will find the point P dash, right? Somewhere on this line, right? You will find this point P dash. From that line P dash, right? Now this is 12 mm above, right? So this distance is 12 mm. So actually, right, to make it easy, I'll show it in a different, right? I'll mark this. I'll mark this line one and this line two. This one and two line are now taken as a common line, right? That is the thing done here. Imagine that now uh, from the axis, from the your, from a certain axis, you have turned by a certain angle and you have observed P and turned by another, turned by alpha plus beta angle and you have observed Q. Now you are standing on line one, right? You are standing on line one and you have to raise your telescope by a 12 mm to see the actual point, right? So you are standing, so this is your line one and you have to raise your telescope by 12 mm to see that uh, elevation, right? So that is the thing I have drawn here, right? When it comes to point Q, you have to below this, you have to in the down direction, you have to lower the telescope by a uh, certain distance, right? That is 19 millimeters to observe the point Q dash, right? So that Q dash would be somewhat at a different location. Why is it? So because now if you say this distance, right? Let's say this AP dash and AQ dash are not equal. AP dash is not equal to AQ dash. Reason? One is 30.5, another one is 38.5. So obviously if you use Pythagoras theorem, this AQ dash and AP dash would be a different value, right? So that's why these locations are a bit far away, right? Right, and they have said, right? The distance, horizontal distance, that is AP double dash, right? that we are observing is 89, right? So this is the horizontal distance, right? So keep that in mind, we are in plan view, right? So we are just marking this one is our horizontal lines, right? From horizontal line, we have raised by certain amount, right? So this would be our actual point, P. So similarly for Q, there would be another point to find the horizontal distance, right? So this would be the point, actual point Q. This Q double dash, Q da, uh, P double dash, right? So Q double dash and P double dash, these two are the projections, projection of Q and P on the horizontal plane, right? Right? So we are just observing at an angle, right? So we are projecting that to the horizontal plane. So that's why they are in the question, they have given the horizontal distance, not the actual distance, 
right? They have not given the actual distance between A and B, P. They have given the horizontal distance between A and P, right? So we have to be careful while drawing that figure, right? Imagine that you are doing this work so you can easily figure out, right? So they have another thing, we'll mark this, this length as HP and this length as HQ, right? So they have given in the data that is HP, height difference between P and Q as 15.65. And they are asking us to find a Q double dash, the horizontal distance between A and Q. And we have to find this, right? So how to figure that out, right? Let's see, right? So, right, we can find HP, right? We can find HP, right? How to find HP? Using similar triangle concept, you can write 12 by HP is equal to AP dash over AP double dash, right? So in that case, you can write HP is equal to 12 times AP double dash over AP dash, right? So you can get 12 times AP double dash is given to us, that is 89, the horizontal distance between A and P over what is AP dash from this figure, from your plan view, if you see, you can write uh, AP dash is equal to square root of right, 30.5 squared plus F squared, right? So from this, you can find HP, right? So what is HP? So HP is, if you solve, you'll get somewhat close to 6.977 meter. Since you know HP plus HQ, right? HQ can be found. So that is 8.673 millimeters. Sorry, meter, right? Meters or millimeters. It should be in millimeters or meters. Meters, yeah. Right? So that are the values of HP and HQ, right? Now you know HQ. Right. So once you know HQ from the below triangles, you can write again using similar triangle concept 19 by HQ is equal to AQ dash over AQ double dash. So in that sense, AQ double dash is equal to 9 AQ dash into HQ by 19. So what is AQ dash? Again, if you go to your plan view, what is AQ dash? If you see, that is 38.5 squared plus F squared. Or you can use trigonometry also. So that is F squared plus 38.5 squared. Into HQ, we know it, that is 8.673 over 19. So if you solve, we can find uh, the horizontal distance between. A and Q. So that is approximately 70.69 meters. Right? So that is the second part. Right? So the final part is find the radius level of point P and Q if the radius level of the camera axis at station A is 687 meter above mean sea level, right? So now we are in elevation view, right? The radius level at A is given to us as 68.86 meters. So this is your horizontal level now. From this horizontal level, to find the radius level of HP, you have to add, sorry, point P, you have to add this value HP. So radius level of P is 68.86 plus HP. So in that sense, radius level of Q, that is 68.86 minus HQ because it is below the taxis, right? So very simple calculation, right? Just when you are drawing the calculate, drawing the figure, uh, be careful, right? 
uh, think that you are in the practical, you are in the field and draw the figure. So in that case, you can easily uh, find what is happening, right? So that is uh, part, question number two, part A, right? So we will see part B. So what is part B? De derive a mathematical relationship to show the displacement of an image in an aerial photograph due to ground relief. So this is a theory, right? There is the proof in the book, right? Uh, you can find out uh, there. Uh, the ground relief means the variation of the ground, right? Ground level. Due to the variation of the ground level, there would be a small displacement. There's very small, easy proof. You can find it from the textbook, right? Uh, the C part. An aerial photograph was taken on a flat urban area from an aircraft flying at a height of 5,350 meter above mean sea level, right? Uh, the radial distance to the image to the base of the transmission tower is 85.2 mm and the radial distance to the image of the top of is 86.85 mm. Uh, determine the height of the tower if the elevation of the tower base is 50 meter. Right? So that is the question there, right? So that is based on that previous theory, right? So if you prove that, if you see that theory, right? So that theory finally uh, gives us an equation, something like this. It is RB minus RA is equal to RB times HB over H. So this is the equation that we have to prove, right? The proof is not that hard, right? You can prove that, right? So in such sense, right? So they have said in this question, uh, the elevation is said to be 5,350 meter, right? So they are asking us to find the displacement, right? So displacement is, so they are asking us to find the height of the tower, no, sorry, right? So this RB minus RA, this is the displacement, right? So we can find the displacement from the data, right? the radial distance for the top of the tower is 85.2 and for the bottom of the tower it is given as 86 point right sorry base is 85.2 for the top it is 86.85 right? so 86.85 minus 85.2 so the radial displacement is 1.65 right so what would be the reduced level H? So 5,350 meter is your aircraft height from mean sea level and the elevation of the base is 50. So the base is 50 meter above the ground level, I, I mean above the mean sea level. So what would be the actual variation between those two? That is 5,350 minus 50, so 5,300 meter is our H. Right, so they ask, they want us to find the height of the tower, right? So here D is equal to R B times H B over H. So D is one point six five. That is equal to our height of tower. We don't know H uh, over five thousand three hundred. R B is our radial dis is our uh, our radial distance to the top of the tower that is 86.85 right that is the second point right usually the b is the second point a is the first point right so h is equal to 100.691 meter right so this is a fairly simple calculation see the proof it's a very simple proof right it's in the book Right, if you understand that proof, right, you can figure it out, right? It's a simple geometry, right? If you see this figure, right, this figure is a bit complicated, that's why, right? Something like this. This is your radial distance, capital R, 
Okay, this is point OA. Yes, yeah, as a horizontal line. Right. So this is our ground relief. Right. There is a point here. This is B. So this point is OB. And this height is HB. Right. This is another point OC. This height is taken as HC. And uh, from the top, right? so we are observing from an aerial view, right? From an aerial view, this would be our photographing plane, right? From this point, about f distance, we will be flying, right? So this would be our height h, right? And here we are observing these views. Right. So here. This is our focal length and this, this is our axis. There are the respective points, right? Since this is A, B, C, and the respective points here also simply in between B and this is C, right? So these are, this is the figure, right? It's a bit clumsy, you can refer in the book, right? The proof is based like this. The proof is completely based on geometry, right? Not a hard proof, right? So these distances, these radial distances from this origin to the simple A, OA is RA, OB is RB, right? That is simple B, right? OC is RC. So this is the So using that small triangle and the larger triangle, right? For this A1, that is LA, and OA, right? You can write simple RA by capital R equal to F by H. Similarly, using the triangle L, B, O, B, right? The triangle you can write, right? RB by R, right? Is equal to F by H minus HB. Right. So from these two equations, right, if you divide one equation by another equation, you will get RA by RB, right, RA by RB is equal to H minus HB over H, right. So we have to find this height, right, or in some sense, they will um, ask us to prove the radial displacement. Radial displacement is RB minus RA. So I'll subtract one from both the sides. So that is o, adding minus one for both the sides, right? So in that sense, sorry, not adding minus one, sorry. Both the side we will take one minus, right? One minus. So in that sense, we will get RP minus RA over RB is equal to HB over H. Right? So displacement D is equal to radial displacement D is equal to HB times RP by H. So this is the proof. The proof is very simple, right? Not a difficult proof. The thing is drawing the figure is uh, without a ruler, it's a bit difficult, right? So if this proof comes into the question, one of the question, uh, draw the figure uh, properly. So that is the trick there. And next thing we have to find is the similar triangle. So in that sense, we can easily find out uh, what is the theory. Right? 
so that is uh, question number two all right so question number three it is based on uh, this uh, condition quantity and the error random errors errors so part a is a theory part part b is also completely based on theory rejection of uh, that is the three sigma if it is greater than three sigma we used to reject right uh, the c part right the c part they are asking us the following set of reduced equations uh, for a group of indirect observed independent angles uh, write down the normal equations for r1 r2 and r3 right they want us to write down the normal equations right so we'll quickly do that question and find the corrected value for a one they want us to find the corrected value of a right we'll see that. so they have given that is the equation one is r1 is equal to zero and the weight is one right r2 is equal to zero and weight is one r3 is equal to zero again weight is one r1 plus r2 minus one equals zero and the weight is two here r2 plus r3 plus 1.5 equals zero weight is two finally r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus 0.5 is equal to zero and weight is two so if we write the normal equation for r1 we have to take all the equations where r1 is involved so this one this one and this one these three and multiply by the weight so in that case for first equation that is only one into r1 uh, the next equation you will get two into r1 plus r2 minus one for the final again two into r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus 0.5 equal zero similarly for r2 uh, this in comes into play again this one comes again this one and this one there are four equations for r2 so one plus r2 sorry one into r2 not one plus r2 right one into r2 plus two in two times r1 plus r2 minus 1 plus two times r2 plus r3 plus 1.5 finally plus two two times r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus 0 0.5 equals 0 similarly for r3 r3 we will get this one again this and this three equations so one times r3 plus two times r2 plus r3 plus 1.5 plus two times r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus 0.5 equal zero right by solving all these three you will get a simultaneous equations of three variables that is 5 r1 plus 4 r2 uh, my plus 2 r3 minus 1 equals 0 and 4 r1 plus 5 r2 plus 4 r3 minus plus 2 equals 0 and finally 2 r1 plus 4 r1 sorry 4 r2 plus 5 r3 plus 4 equals 0 so you have to solve this so you can use the calculator right uh, to solve these simultaneous equations, let me quickly show that. Give me a second. Right. So in the calculator, so if you see, right. So you can select the more equation that is number five and your equation type is you see that is ax plus by plus cz equal d 
right so while substituting value we have to be careful that is equal d right so in our case we have taken the constants to one side so while substituting the values be careful right so equal so we have to take type 2 right so the values are 5 4 2 and for the first equation that is 1 right so we had minus 1 if the minus 1 goes to the other side it becomes plus 1 right so next 4 5 4 and finally minus 2 right and finally 2 4 5 and finally it is minus 4 right? so while solving we are getting r1 equal 1 r2 equal minus 2 by 3 and r3 equal again minus 2 by 3 so these are the values so you can use your calculator so from this we can find r1 equal 1 r2 equal minus 2 by 3 and r2 equal sorry r3 also equal to minus 2 by 3 okay. finally they have given the value for a as 35 degree 12 minute 30 seconds correct a day a dash is a minus r1 right so in that case you have to reduce that value right so one minute sorry one second is reduced so corrected value would be 35 degree 12 minute 29 seconds right really simple question right so that is question number three condition quantities so question number four uh, entirely based on uh, triangulation theory right so those conditions and uh, how to do the uh, bearings right so you, the d part if i want to give an idea for d part you can start they have said you know the coordinates for point a and the bearing of a b right in that case you can apply uh right they have, yeah the coordinates of a b and the bear right coordinates of a and the bearing right uh, you can use your whole circle bearing and the coordinate to calculate it by your continuous format like from A you can go to B and then you go to C and D and E and in that manner you can do like uh, calculating W, C, B and all in uh, our uh, survey camp right so the same method can be used so this is entirely theory so I'm going to skip this one so you can read it out from your textbook right and question number five again so similarly this is based on gis right uh, it's in the block two again completely theory right so again i'm going to skip that uh, gis part also right finally question number six again we have a small proof right uh, right a highway engineer proposed a simple circular curve to be constructed in a road project to connect two straight two straights which intersect at a in such a way that it is also tangential to the line joining points b and c lying on two straight lines derive the following expression for the curve of radius of which is r where a b c are the lines right they have given the figure right so we have to derive this so actually to be frank the deriving part is very easy right we have to find out from where we have to start this question right so that is the trick here so i'll quickly draw the figure we have two straight so this is one straight and we have another straight So these are joined by a simple curve. So that is not a curve, right? Something like this. And here the center of the curve, right? These are our radius, R for both the sides r and r right from the vertex we'll draw one line here right we'll name it right they have said 
as a triangle here. Right. So this is point C, this is point B, and this is point A. Right. And let's say this point has X and this point has Z. Right. These points. Right. And there's I'll draw another perpendicular. Right. We are meeting here. So this is Y. Right. So here the key is in the answer. If you see the answer correctly, that is square root of S into S minus A, S minus B, S minus C over S into S minus A. Right. Am I right? So this is the thing they are asking us to prove. Or not S into S minus A, just S minus A. Right. So this is the thing they are asking us to prove. The key here is this numerator part. This part. This is the key. So this is actually the area of a triangle. For, for a triangle whose sides are A, B and C, the area is given by that formula. So that is the key here. So you have to find the area in two different manners. In one manner, you have to prove this equation. In another manner, you have to somewhat incorporate R. Somewhat, you have to bring R into the play. Right? So see, area of... A, B, C, right? You can write this as area of A, um, area of A, B, C, right? Also can be written as O, A, B, A, O, B, A, O, B, right? This triangle plus A, O, C, this triangle, right? minus a uh, obc right i'll color this in different areas so you can figure it out right so a b o that's in green this is a b o right so next other one is a c o so this is a c o Finally, we have O, B, C. O, B, C is this part. Right? This is O, B, C. Right? So this gives the area of A, B, C. Isn't it? So how to write A, B, A, O, B, area of A, O, B, half into base A, B. Base A, B into perpendicular height R. Right? Plus half into for AOC, again, base AC into perpendicular height R minus for OAB, OBC, half into base BC into, again, what is the height there? Perpendicular height, that is again R. So in as a common value, you can take R by 2 as a common. You will get AB plus AC minus BC. What is AB? AB is simple C. What is AC? AC is simple B. And what is BC? BC is simple A. So you will get B plus C minus A. Right? In tri trigonometry, you know 2AC is equal to A plus B plus C. Right? So in that case, you can write BC is equal to 2S minus A. So if you bring that here, R, R by 2, to 2s minus a minus a okay so this gives r by 2 into 2 times s minus a so this is r into s minus a so that is delta that is area so somewhat you have to prove this in another manner right so this is a bit long one right we'll see now if you have any triangle a b c right any triangle, right? This is the perpendicular. So this is A, B, C. So this is angle A, this is angle B, this is angle C. So this is side A, side B, side C. So we know area of a triangle delta is half into base B into perpendicular height. Perpendicular height can be written as C into sine A, isn't it? 
so here bc by 2 the sin a is the trouble so you can change this into 2 sin a by 2 cos a by 2 right so this becomes bc times sin a by 2 cos a by 2 now somewhat you have to remove the sin a by 2 cos a by 2 and bring in s into the play so you know cos a is equal to b squared plus e squared minus a squared over 2 bc so cos a can be written as 2 cos squared a by 2 minus 1 so similarly here this side you can write as b squared plus e squared minus a squared over 2bc this minus 1 adds up to the other side so 2 cos squared a by 2 can be written as b squared plus 2bc plus e squared minus a squared over 2bc right so cos squared a by 2 is equal to here b plus c whole thing squared minus a squared over 4bc right so here this is a squared minus b squared format so one is addition factor that is a plus b plus c other one is the different factor that is b plus c minus a over 4bc so a plus b plus c is you know this is 2s b plus c you can write it as 2s minus a there is another minus a so that becomes 2s minus 2a over 4bc so there's a 2 here you can take a 2 out so the will cancel out so cos a by 2 is equal to s into s minus a over bc square root so you have found cos a by 2 right similarly in this step instead of this expansion we can write 1 minus 2 sine squared a by 2 that is equal to b squared plus e squared minus a squared over 2 bc so here if you sub take 2 sine squared a by 2 that becomes 2 bc minus b squared minus c squared plus a squared over 2 bc right so 2 sine squared a by 2 is equal to you can write a squared minus b minus c squared over 2bc so this can be factorized such that a plus b minus c is a factor and a plus c minus b is a factor right sum and difference over 2bc okay. so sine squared a by 2 is equal to here 4bc here a plus b can be written as 2s minus c already there is another c so 2s minus 2c here a plus c can be written as 2s minus b already there is another b so 2s minus 2b so 2 and 2 get together and 4 cancels out with 4 so sine a by 2 can be written as square root of s minus b into s minus c or bc right so if you substitute this value and this value into this equation square root of bc square root of bc will cancel out with bc only the numerator terms will remain so in that case delta is equal to square root of s into s minus a s minus b s minus c so we have a delta equation here and we have another equation for delta here you can equal this two and found find out what is r so you'll get this equation right it's fairly simple now right so this part is the major thing here this is the thing you have to find figure it out right so that is a proof right so now we'll go to the calculation right so by equating this so this is equal to r into s minus a so you'll get r is equal to square root of s into s minus a s minus b s minus c by s minus a okay. so the question states here now the project engineer is to construct the simple curve by connecting two straight lines x a and z a and also touch the line b c according to the survey measurements he gathered the lens 
XB, XB is 400, BA is 1,200, CA is 1,000. We are the points of tangency on XA, ZA and BC are X, Z and Y respectively. According to his calculation, the distance along the curve X to C along the curve is 1,800 meter. Determine whether the length he arrived from X to Z is correct. So we have to check and see whether that length is correct. Right? We'll see. So now, right? So in this figure, we'll use the same figure. This is the same figure, right? So they have said the length XB, this length is 400. This AB length is 1200. CA is 1000, right? Uh, right. So if we somewhat figure out, right? If we somewhat figure out what is the value of simple A, simple B, and simple C, that is the sides of triangle ABC, we can find the radius, isn't it, from this formula? So we have to see what is A. To find A, we need to find the length of BY and YC, right? So we don't know both the values, right? To find BY, it is easy. What is BY? From a, in a curve, from an external point, if you draw two tangents, those length are equal. So if XB is 400, then BY is also 400, right? So A, one portion is done, that is 400, right? So that's another portion, we have to find out that, right? B is not in case, B is directly given, this is 1000. C, you, you know that is directly given, 1200. So similarly, when you take this point A, from point A, AX is a tangent, A is at the tangent. So AX and AZ should be equal. So AX is 1,600. So AZ is also 1,600. So in that case, this is 600 meters. So if so, CY is also 600 meters, same principle. So entirely A is also 1,000. So we can substitute these three values in this equation and find the radius. So what is S? You can find S. What is S? S is A plus B plus C by 2. So you can find S, right? So S is 1600 and just you have to substitute and find R. So R is 800 meter, right? Now we know the value of R. Now, if you know the value of R, right, you can find the value of this angle, right? So this angle of this curve, this portion. We can find that angle, right? How to find that angle? Uh, Give me a second. Some technical issue. So to find that angle, right? I'll draw this figure down so you can quickly understand because this figure is much more complicated, right? So here, this, this is the curves, two straight lines. Right. This is our center. 
đấy these are the meeting points đấy so this is our angle delta so this is delta by 2 đấy so we know this tangent length as 1600 meter so this is our radius we just figure it out this as 800 meter right so what is tan delta by 2 tan delta by 2 is 1600 by 800 so from this delta by tan delta by 2 is 2 so delta can be figured out it is approximately 126 degrees 52 minutes right so if you know delta and r radius r from s equal r theta right so theta should be in radian right so r is 800 and theta that is 126 52 by 180 into 5 right so that is you can find this value <coughs> this value is approximately 1771.438 meter right so so they are asked according to his calculation the distance right determine whether the length he arrived from x to z is correct right so actually the value he has arrived is higher than the calculate the exact value right so that is the comment you have to give one uh, give finally and end the question right so that is the curve question question number six right so the final part here is right the final part question number seven is regarding a headlight question i guess all right we'll see for the same road project discussed in question six the project engineer proposed to use a parabolic vertical curve to a certain location to overcome a topographical variation the vertical curve is used to join a falling grade of 4.4 and a rising grade of 3.6. The point of intersection of the two grades has a chain edge of 4,375 meter and a radius level of 162.42 meter above the mean sea level. The curve is required to have a reduced level of 1,600. Sorry, uh, 164.4 above mean sea level at a chain edge of 4,400 meter in order to allow the adequate headroom. Determine the length of the vertical curve that should fulfill the requirement above and the chain edge and the reduced level of its lowest point. So we have to determine the length of the curve, the chain edge and the reduced level of its lowest point, right? Those are the concepts, right? so the figure is given to us right so we'll see uh, what is happening right so here right i'll try to annotate in, in this figure itself so that would be a bit easier right Right, if you see, right, I'll try to write here itself so that is that would be a bit easier rather than drawing this again. So if you see the grade angle, right? So first we have to find the grade angle, right? The grade angle. The grade angle is minus 4.4 since it is falling, minus 3.6. So that gives us minus eight point minus eight percentage. So that is our grade angle, right? So from the grade angle, we can find the reduced level, right? Uh, of the grade A, B, right? This line, this grade A, B line at this point D, right? We can find that grade, right? Because some data are here, right? Using that data, I'm figuring that out. So reduced level of grade A, B, right? at d so already we know the reduced level at uh, so they have said 
the reduced level of uh, point of intersection right the point of intersection at this point this point of intersection this is given to us as thousand sorry hundred and sixty three point four two right minus right what is the grade of this one that is four point two four point four it is falling in percentage or hundred this distance is marked here right in the figure it is marked around 25 times 25 right so the reduce level there is 162.362.32 meter at d right so the offset right so the offset from tangent ab right tangent a b right at that 4400 meter right at 4400 meters right this this reduce level is 164.4 right it is given from in the grade it is from the grade line we figure it out that is 162.32 so the offset we are getting is 2.08 meter, right? So if the length of the curve, right? We'll take length of the curve as L, right? So the mid offset, there's an equation for mid offset. The proof is in the text book. The mid offset Y is given by a L by 800, right? So we know what is uh, A, that is the grade angle, right? So we can write Y is equal to 8 divided by 800. So in that case, 8 L by 800, that is equal to L by 100, right? So that is the grade angle, sorry, the mid offset, right? So, Offset at 4,400 chain edge, right? Offset at 4,400 chain edge, right? Is given by, right? L by 100, that is this mid offset Y, right? L by 100 times L by 2 plus 25 squared over L by 2 squared, right? This is the mid offset theorem, right? This uh, formula, right? Uh, we are using this formula to write this. There's a formula for offset, right? Right, if you solve this, you can simplify this somewhat and it will become L plus 50 squared over 100 L, right? So we know this offset is equal to 2.08, right? We figure it out from the geometry and this is from the equation, right? From this L can be found to be two values. One is 74.4 meter or the other value is 33.61 meter, right? So we know the curve is, right? The curve is definitely larger than 25 right so the, here is that 25 mark this spot this is greater than definitely curve is greater than that length right so this is from the midpoint right so the curve should be the the half of the curve that is l by 2 should be greater than this 25 in that sense this 33 is rejected so the length of the curve is this value 74.4 meter so the length of the curve part is done, right? So the next thing is we have to figure out the chain edge and the reduce level. So these thing has to be figured out, right? To find the chain edge, right? Uh, there is a concept, right? So, right, I'll clear this and we'll write again. So this is a parabola, right? So parabola in the sense, 
the equation, general equation is this one, right? So the gradient is given by 2ax plus b. The rate of change of gradient is given by a constant, right? So this set, the gradient, the rate of change of the gradient is constant, right? So we can use simple straight line work to find some parameters, right? So from the start of the curve, to find the distance for the lowest points, right? To find the distance of the lowest point, right? We know the length of the curve is 74.4. We just proved length of the curve is 74.4, right? At the lowest point, right? You know, there would be the zero gradient, right? the lowest point, the gradient would be the grade would be zero. That means this 4.4 has completely changed and here the grade is zero and here after that it will start to increase, right? So out of the total change, right? So the distance for this point, right? This distance D. So distance D is written as out of this total 74.4 length, the change is eight meter, right? So eight, the grade has changed by eight. At the lowest point, the change is only 4.4, right? So the distance would be 40.92 meter, right? So at, the, at this point B, we know the chain age is 4,375. That is a midpoint. From that midpoint, if we reduce half of the length of the curve, we can come to start point, right? And we, if we add this D, we can go to the chain edge of the lowest point. So the chain edge is, is given by 4375 minus L by 2 plus D, right? I think from this point, we are coming back to the start of the curve and going back to the D. Right? So that is that work. Right? So from that lowest point, right, we can find the offset. Right? So using that equation again, right? For offset equation, right? The offset equation says y times right? 40.92, that is the distance squared over L by 2 squared. Right, so the y you know that is a l by eight hundred a l by eight hundred times forty point nine two squared over l is seventy four point four by two square. So a is eight, l is seventy four point two. If you substitute, you can find the offset that is point nine meters. Right. So now we have to find the Reduce level at the lowest point, right? So how to figure out the reduce level at the normal point? Normal, sorry, at the lowest point. So here, at this point B, we know the reduce level that is one hundred and sixty-three point four two, right? So using this we can find out the reduce level at the midpoint, sorry, at the lowest point using the grade, right? Uh, it's something like this, right? Now, we know This distance D, this is 40.92, right? So from the center, we have to go back by, that is, this is the midpoint, we have to go back a distance of 74.4 by 2. That is half the distance. And only we can come to this point, right? So we know the reduce level between this point, right? We have to find the distance between the lowest point and this midpoint, right? not point E, I'm saying the lowest point, right? Lowest point and the midpoint, right? So that distance 
is given to us as 40.92 minus 74.4 by 2, right? So to find the reduced level here, that means the height difference, we have to multiply this by the grade, that is 4.4 by 100, right? So this is the grade, right? So this variation would have been reduced because this is the falling grade, right? From 163.42, we have to minus this, right? And finally, we have to add the offset, right? Offset, we, we have to add the offset because it is high, right? From the straight line, it would have gone up, right? So it is 0.9, we have to add it, right? So this is due to the grade and this is due to the offset, right? So the final answer is 164.16 meter, right? So that is the concept here. The major thing is we have to keep in mind the offset equation and other than that most of the things are geometry right so that is the part here right the final part is uh, find the headlight lamp visibility when the lamp are located 70 centimeter above the ground surface along the sag and if the head be headlamp beam of a vehicle makes an angle of two degree with the horizontal uh, when, the st when standing on the flat ground, right? So here we have to find uh, those things, right? Right, the headlamp visibility thing, right? So we have two equations, right? One is for the condition S less than or equal L. So we'll start from that. So L is equal to S squared A over uh, 200 times h plus tan theta into s right so we'll substitute the values so l is 74.4 that is equal to we don't know s right and grade is 8 s squared over 200 height is given to us as 70 centimeter so 0 0.7 plus tan 2 degree times s right so solving this equation, you have to find the value for S. So S is equal to 81.15 meters. So this is the answer we are getting. But what is the condition here? Condition state that S should be less than L. So that is not the case. L is 74, S is 81. So obviously this is not satisfying the condition. So this answer is wrong, right? So then we have to move to the other equation. The other equation is when S is greater than or equal to L, L is equal to 2S minus 200 H plus S tan theta by A. So we have to substitute the values. So 74.4 equal to 2S minus 200 H is 0 0.7 plus S tan 2 degree over A, that is 8. So if you solve this, you can find the value for S. Here S is 81.7 meter. So here that condition is satisfied. So S is 81, L is 74. So that is according to this condition. So this is satisfied. So the answer is 81.7 meters. So this is the answer, right? So that is the final part. So I hope you would have gained some amount of idea, right? So my um, preference is if I do this paper, my preference would be definitely mass hole diagram and aerial photography. These two questions I'll definitely do. And question number three, radial, uh, this error calculations, those things. And uh, the next part, question number four, it seems easy, right? I, can, I think I can write, right? So I will be doing that one. And question number six, right? So I'll, I'll keep question number seven as a last resort because its calculations are a bit lengthy. We have to do much calculations. So other than that, I think if you get some sort of triangulation calculation, like a whole circle bearing those things, uh, you can go to that. 
So GPS and all, if you are confident in the theory part, you can write. So that is my least favorite. That is my last choice. So I think uh, you would have understood. So we'll meet quickly in another video. See you.